This is Representative Nancy Brown's interview, February 20, February 19th, 1991. Okay, first I'm going to ask you some questions about your service in the House. When were you first elected? 1984. So this is my, um, going on my fourth term. Going on your fourth term, okay. And you've been in the House the whole time? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And you're a registered Republican, I assume. How long have you been registered as a Republican? Forever, right? Forever. <laughs> Whenever I registered. <laughs> okay. Why did you register as a Republican? Can, well, can you? I, I think, think as probably most people do, because my family was mm -hmm. Republican. And that seems like a lot of, a lot people, of people have that, that same reason. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you describe your first election? My first election was very difficult, although I didn't realize how difficult it was until I went went beyond it. Um, I was called and asked, uh, I, I was in Chicago at the time, and some friends of mine called me and asked me if I'd consider running. It was Thursday, and the filing deadline, I believe, was that Monday. And I said, well, I don't know, never thought about it before. And they said, well, we really want you to do this, and you better think about it. So I talked to my husband about it, and um, he said, well, why ask me? You're going to do what you want anyway. <laughs> I said, well, you know, and, and so I talked to the kids, and we were all there, and uh, I drove back and filed, and then had to leave for meetings in Washington, D.C. on Saturday. So I drove back Friday, um, got the paperwork, filed, went to Washington, D.C., and was gone the whole next week. And so when I came home, then I had to stop and think about what I did. And as it turned out, there were three other people that filed as Republicans beside Ooh. me. So I was in a four-way primary. My goodness. Uh, but interestingly enough, I really never thought I'd lose. I mean, I, huh. I really was not worried about that election in the sense that I felt uh, I felt good about people. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I really never thought about losing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were times later into the election where you kind of get that panicky feeling, like, oh, what if I lose? But I mm -hmm. just felt um, felt good about what I was doing, mm -hmm. and I guess I didn't have the best interest in winning or losing. You know, I just kind of went and did what I was doing to win. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, well, now, what made you decide to run? Had you been thinking about this? No, in or? fact, I, there's a newspaper article I have that uh, uh, there was a profile on me done by the Star quite some time ago, and the very last question was, uh, have you ever given any thought to running for higher office? And I said, absolutely not. So, no, I had never thought about running for higher huh. office. And uh, I had been actively involved uh, in local politics. I moved mm -hmm. to Kansas in 1980. I see. And when I moved there, I didn't want to come. I was very happy in my life before, and my husband's business transferred there, mm. and so we moved, and um, I got actively involved very quickly in a sewer issue in Kansas, in mm. Stanley, Kansas, the community I came from. And I went and talked to the county commissioners, and I had been involved in politics back in Illinois. So I went and talked to the county commissioners because I was very disturbed about the direction I saw them going. And it was mm -hmm. also a drought year. 1980 was a very bad mm -hmm. drought year. And I was the sewer and water chairman back in the community I moved from. I was going to run for mayor, which is another reason why I wanted to Oh. And uh, talked to the county commissioners and said I really didn't like the direction they were going and why were they doing this, why weren't they conserving water, et cetera. And Bob Bacon, the county commissioner at the time, said, well, Nancy, you know, you sound like somebody that would really like to get involved in the community here. And I said, no, I really wouldn't. <laughs> so he called me up and said, do you want to serve on the mental health board? And I said, no, I, I don't want to serve on the mental health board. Uh, I said, I'm really interested in, in government land use planning and things like that. And he said, okay. So he called me later and asked me if I wanted to fill a vacancy as a township trustee, which I filled hmm. um, in the fall of that year, in the fall of 80. And, uh, so I, that's how I got involved in Kansas politics very hmm. quickly. I hadn't lived there very long. Well, that's unusual. So, so I was already I was already actively involved in mm -hmm. the people in the community. And when I was asked to run, um, the reason I did it was because I really felt that I could benefit the people in my mm -hmm. community further as a state legislator than I had been able to do as a township mm -hmm. trustee. Mm -hmm. And that's how I really started running. Well, that's quite a jump from yeah, township trustee. Yeah, it is. Trustee. It really was. And I really um, had not thought about it. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, I had t I had been in Topeka and I had testified on bills and I had helped write oh. a sewer ordinance uh, as township trustee. As township trustee, I so see. I was somewhat comfortable mm -hmm. with the 
with with the place anyway. Mm -hmm. and I knew and I knew what the committees were like, and I knew the local government chairman, and I knew some of the legislators, and so it wasn't real foreign to me as far as mm -hmm. coming here. Mm. But Kansas was foreign to me, so I I had only lived here four years when I ran, so I really didn't Goodness. know a lot about the state. That's kind of unusual, uh, I yeah, believe. Yeah, I think it is right. unusual for somebody to You may be one of the few that has, has done that, that yeah. I've talked and it, to. It, um, in, interestingly enough, though, I think because I'm a, I was new to the state, I took a real different interest in the state than the native mm -hmm. takes. I, I started a historical society in my community, for instance, mm -hmm. before I came. And I'd be talking about all this Kansas history and all these unique things, and they'd look at me and say, that's not history, that's Sam's place, you know. And I'd say, yeah, but there's history in Sam's place. And, uh, you know, it was kind of fun to, to watch them. And so we put up some Santa Fe historical markers, and we now have a church. I'm still, I'm still chairman of the historical society. Actually, I, we, have, we broke a community organization into two groups, but I chair the main group. So... Um, you know, I, I became acclimated to Kansas real fast. It took a, oh, probably a greater interest in Kansas than I even took in my own state of hmm. Illinois. And that's, as far as that's your home state, state or where you were born? That's my home state, yeah, right. Uh, you said some people called you up. Uh, did they help you run then, your yes, campaign? Yes, yes, uh -huh. they did um, as much as they could. But I had also worked for Dave Owen when he ran for governor. Mm -hmm. I was his office manager, so I had some idea about Kansas politics and a little mm -hmm. bit of idea about how to put a campaign together although I had never run for partisan politics before. Mm -hmm. I, had, um, I was going to run for mayor in the community I came from. That wasn't partisan. That wasn't huh? partisan. Mm -hmm. And I really underestimated, I think, partisan politics. Yeah, maybe underestimated why, what way? Well, maybe that's why I was afraid. I mean, oh. Because I, I really mm -hmm. didn't, it never dawned on me. I mm -hmm. thought people elected people because they were people, and I really never knew yeah. that I might be the greatest person in the world, but if they were a Democrat and I was a Republican, they weren't going to support me. However, I did have a great deal of bipartisan support because of my involvement with um, Stanley Sewer. There were about 500 people who was already a real core group for me oh. uh, that were affected by the sewer, and I was not in the sewer district. I just went to bat Ooh. for them as a township trustee. They never knew I was a Republican, and I never knew they were mm -hmm. Democrats. They just felt that I was up there in Topeka fighting mm. for them on sewer issues, and they didn't seem to care. I mean, so mm -hmm. I still, to this day, some of my biggest campaign workers are Democrats. Oh, that's, yeah. that's good. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. for me, it's, it's mm -hmm. been very positive, but partisan politics are real different. Mm -hmm. Well, now, um, who were the other candidates in your primary and general election that first time? They're, um, Stop and think. It seems so long ago. I guess it really mm -hmm. wasn't. There was an attorney who had worked um, in, the, in Johnson County, I think, the Johnson County court system, and, and he was he's the one that came the closest to me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a girl who, a uh, young lady whose husband was the public works director in the city of Olathe. Mm -hmm. She was one of them. Um, who's the girl? Isn't that terrible? I don't remember. Did you have a general election race too then? Yes, and then I had a general after that, and I had um, uh, George Collins, who's run against me since that time, and is very actively involved in the Democrat Party. Uh, an old-time Olathe person who hmm. lived there all his life. And my district at the time was about about 60 40 rule and 40 percent oh really so now it's flipped the other way except since we've redistricted has i but, see um but the rural area was predominant when i mm -hmm. first ran hmm. and there were some shifts over the years but my biggest my biggest um, race was with the people from the city of olaypa hmm. Well, how did you uh, campaign? What type of strategies did you use? Did you well, use them? Well, I, I campaigned strictly on who I was. Mm -hmm. I did not know the other people. Mm -hmm. um, I did not know late the city politics at all. Um, I just basically said, this is who I am, and this is what I've done, and made some mistakes looking back, according to people. I put in things about my previous life, I'm sort of water chairman, and that I came from Illinois, and People said to me later, well, you never should have done that. Uh, hmm. You shouldn't have talked about coming from another state. Um, I don't know. I, I just... Uh, Did you go door to door a lot? I, I didn't. I've never gone door to door a lot. I hate going door to door. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
um, I did do some door to door the first time, mm -hmm. and my family did some door to door for me. Uh, my kids were younger, and they helped too. Um, and other people went door to door for me. I'm not good at that. That's mm -hmm. not a strength of mine, and I don't like it. And I think it shows when you do that. But I did. Um, I did have some friends in uh, a newspaper, that, a local newspaper, and they ran a lot of stories. And I, and I, in fact, I had written a weekly article for the newspaper oh. that, that was a free paper to a lot of the people in my rural district. So I was already pretty well known in the rural What areas. newspaper was it? It was the Blue Valley Gazette at the time. Okay. It's no longer in existence. Hmm. Uh, but that was a real mm -hmm. source of help for me. Hmm. Um, did, you, I, did you do a lot of mail outs? Or? I did. No, I didn't have very much money, and I didn't know mm -hmm. how to get it. I mean, I, I, I never mm -hmm. really was good at asking for money, and I'm still not. Um, but I did have fundraisers that were put on by people for me. Just individuals. Right, that, and I didn't have any, I had very little path money. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any in the, part, in the I don't think, the uh, first primary, because mm -hmm. they didn't know me, and, and I wasn't a real Republican. Um, <laughs> well... Uh, did the media, besides that newspaper, did they get involved in yes, any way? Yes, but, but I had already had a reputation, uh, which I still have, as being kind of a, an activist. Um, mm. And so I think with the, quote, city newspaper, it's, they viewed me not positively. They viewed me more as a rebel rouser, kind of. Oh, a, really? Yeah, they did not, and they still sometimes view me that mm. way. Um, they viewed me more as somebody who was kind of an agitator to the county commission, who was fighting for the rural rights of the people, but not supportive of the urban mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. And which is interesting because I was on a city council of a small community, yeah, but, it's uh, but like a 3,000 population mm -hmm. community, but it was not a rural community. It mm -hmm. was right in, there's not too much rural in, in mm -hmm. White County up in, 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 right adjacent to Cook County in, in the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was a city, you know, from my standpoint, mm. but they, they really did me more negatively as possible. Although, in the, um, in the primary, in the general, I was endorsed. But in the primary, I was not, uh, I don't know if they did endorse in the primary. I think it was more, I, uh, more articles. We had some, I, I was not prepared, I guess, for the negative letters to the editor. Mm. And I responded <coughs> to some of those, and which brought on more letters to the <laughs> editor. And I've learned, and I ha and I had some letters to the editor back and forth to the editor. Mm. And the editor was John Marshall at the time, and John Marshall, I don't know if you know him, John Marshall's up here now, but he wrote some very, very derogatory things about me and to me at the time. One say. time he told me he was going to hang me up by my underwear. <laughs> I, still, I kept that letter. I, um, it yeah, a, you should give that. Yeah, I kept that one. He uh, did not like me and said I was too, I, I was too thin-skinned and I should not take all those kinds of comments very personal. Uh, so my first campaign, I learned a lot. I can't. It sounds like. Yeah, it was fun. It was real fun. <laughs> Although I subsequently had worse campaigns. Have you really? In the sense of nasty. This last one was very nasty. Hmm. Um, but my first one. I, none of them have been fun. I mean, I don't like campaigning, so they're not fun. But some are less stressful than I others. <laughs> I'm sure that's true. Well, did did anyone precede you in the House or in, the, in Kansas government or any government, as far as state government, as far as that goes? Any relatives in your no, family or your husband's family? Or no. Okay. And your, your Stanley is your, your mailing address. Right. What is your district like then? Well, until two years ago, and then I'll, I'll tell you, my district up until two years ago was a mix of urban and rural, excuse me. Very important. Um, you asked me about who was... Yeah. Your district, yeah. Oh, my district. Yeah. Okay, um, it was predominantly rural for Johnson County. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it went over the Missouri line and south the Miami County line, and then it took in the city of Olathe, but it was gerrymandered from years before. Uh -huh. To get the guy, the, the guy that ran against me twice, to get him out of Edgar Moore's district and thrown into mine. So it went around <laughs> the city of Olathe, that was really a bizarre district. So it had the new area of the city of Olathe and a lot of the old area of the city of Olathe. Then two years ago, what they basically did was cut it in half. So I didn't get any new territory, but I lost 
the majority of the city of Olathe and just have two precincts. Hmm. So it, it was it was one of the largest districts in the state. I think it was the third largest. I growing, have, one of the yeah, growing areas. Really, so. really growing area. And it still mm -hmm. is a very rapidly growing area. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting district. What issues are important to that district? Or I suppose the same district. Well, yeah, the issues that are important now to this district versus the old, the older district. The older district, of course, there were more city issues in the city mm -hmm. of Olathe, and there were some areas even in the city that were concerned with sewer and water. They didn't have sewer, for instance. Mm. Um, I, of course, taxes are, are a problem in the district, but not maybe so much as they are in a lot of other areas, because my district now is partially farm, so mm. that takes care of some of the farm people. Mm -hmm. Partially wealthy, yeah, I have a, a scattering of very wealthy um, home, home sites, acres, two, three mm. acres. And then I've got a scattering of little small communities that are old and, and the old people um, are there and live there all their lives. So part of the thing, it's not just the taxes and the property tax, what well, is, I guess, in mm -hmm. sense, it's also You've got a very progressive area in the school district. Blue Valley School District is a very mm -hmm. active school district. And you have the people who really don't mind paying the school district taxes. And then you have these little pockets of people who they can't understand why we have to have computers in the room. And, and uh, so you, it's a real mixed, it's yeah, a real real mixed, mixed bag. Yeah. Um, and, and you also have people who are saying, gee, I want bigger and better services, and people say, I don't want any services at all, because we mm. have the transient population that come in, and mm -hmm. you're close to see about one park, and they're saying, well, where are the streetlights, and where are the curbs and gutters, uh, and then you have this other group of people saying, I don't want streetlights and curbs and gutters, I moved out here to get away from it. <laughs> kind of like you're, you know, kind of like they're guys with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's just different. Well, did you focus on the issues? Now, you, you had a lot of experience with sewer and that type of thing before. I, 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 yeah, I, or I you, more on yourself in, in your campaigns. Yeah, I guess I, I focus more on myself. I didn't, mm -hmm. and, I, and to this day, I still don't focus on issues. Mm -hmm. I generally feel that if the people trust me and like me, the issues will take care mm -hmm. of themselves. So I don't go out there and say mm -hmm. I'm going to reduce your property taxes. I don't make a lot of promises. Basically, I've always run my campaigns that you know I'm a I'm a good, kind, wonderful person. <laughs> And trust me. <laughs> well, well, I like that, but <laughs> dur during your years here in the in the house, what have been major issues that you that I've worked uh, on? Uh huh. Um, I've worked on a lot of um, obviously local government issues because that is where mm -hmm. my area of expertise is, and and uh, I also became very actively involved in township government uh, when I moved mm. there and started this uh, uh, county township association in 1981, hmm. and then it branched it out to have a state township association. Oh, interesting. And it was what's called the Kansas Association of Townships. And from that, I ended up being on the board of the National Association of Townships. So I became, and still am considered, probably a township expert in the state of Kansas. Oh, and I've heard of that, yeah. So I got involved in a lot of the township issues. And so it became pretty much, uh -huh. even though my township itself, the one I live in, doesn't have a lot of the authority that the other townships mm -hmm. have, I, I, that's been an area of expertise. Because of my national interest, um, I got involved with a lot of national issues and am now involved with the state emergency response, hazardous materials. Um, and that's come about kind of in a little different way. It doesn't necessarily impact my district, but statewide I'm pretty much involved mm. nas at locally and nationally. And um, I'm also actively involved in special populations. Uh, I have a cousin who lived with us that was deaf, so I have worked a lot with the deaf and hearing impaired. Mm -hmm. uh, took that out as a project and, it, and it did, it, did it for a very interesting purpose. I felt that there was no way I'd ever be able to become known in the city of Olathe. They viewed me as an outsider mm -hmm. and always would. I didn't, I didn't live in their school district, and yet half my district it was becoming more and more a bigger part, mm -hmm. and I figured I had to get in that district some way. And I, the school for the deaf is in Olathe, but not in my oh. district. Oh, it's not in it's the not part in, of It's not in my district. And I, Vince Snowbugger came in the same time I came in, and it's in, it was in his district. And so mm -hmm. I felt that there were some things that needed to be done there, mm -hmm. but it was his district, and I didn't want to step on toes. And after a while, I re began to realize that he was not as uncomfortable with the deaf population. 
as I was, and I, I speak see. some sign language and, and, and am comfortable around those people. Mm -hmm. So I decided that a good way to get involved and, and serve that community, but unlike anybody else could serve it, I decided to take on the deaf community mm -hmm. and got seven bills passed for them in 1985 and 86, I think. And mm, that's to this day, still am actively involved in that community. Well, that's important. Well, and it was a service. You know, it was mm -hmm. something I felt I could do that mm -hmm. nobody else could do. And you knew something about it. And, and yeah, yeah. That's it was, so that's another area of interest. And then, mm -hmm. you know, I just get involved in a lot of social issues. Mm -hmm. Do you think any of these issues are women's issues? Would do people still see some issues as women's oh, issues? Oh yeah, and very men's definitely. Issues? But I don't. Yeah. Um, but but I'm sure a lot of people do. And. And even sometimes as women, we isolate issues mm -hmm. as women's issues and non-women's issues. But Do you think, have you seen a change in that in the years you've been in the house? Is, is this more or less true now than it used to be? I think, I think it's, it's um, well, when I first came in, there were fewer women. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought at the time that, um, and I was not involved with women's issues. And when I came in, that mm -hmm. time, I didn't come in with the idea in fact, I wasn't on the school board, so education, which some people view as yep. a women's issue, I didn't have that background. Um, the background I had was government, and, mm -hmm. and that's not a women's issue. No. Perceived. It's and, the, and the other background I had is hazardous materials, which is not perceived as a women's issue. But, and I never, I've always been involved in, in men's boards and governments, mm -hmm. and I never even felt a real need, I guess, to to look at issues as whether they were women or male issues. Mm -hmm. And that's changed. I'm becoming more of a women's activist along hmm. with here instead of less. That sounds opposite to it what is. most people It is opposite. Experience. And I'm trying to figure out why. And I think huh. it's because I've watched particularly Republican women, and I don't want to be critical of that, but when I mm -hmm. first started to do some things with other women, Republican women would say, we want to be one of the boys, and I don't think we want to have a women's group. And yet, uh, I began to realize that if you're going to form networks up here, that's a valuable resource that I didn't want to exclude myself from. Mm -hmm. So I ended up forming the network with some women, Democrat women, and have since expanded that to where mm -hmm. I'm now, I suppose, in some respects, the chairman of the women's groups. Uh, is this the Women's Caucus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty much. Are there any other Republican women beside yourself? Well, we're all involved now. I mean, I've, had, I've, had, I've had several group activities with, with Republicans and Democrats. And Joan Wagner and I recently hosted an event, and the Republican women came. Good. They would not have come perhaps four years ago. Oh, let's see. What is this you hosted with her? I've heard we about it. We hosted a reception at uh, the Heritage House. and. Uh, it was just a social mm -hmm. thing. Uh, there weren't any agendas uh, mm -hmm. that we spread around. Um, we kind of formed a bond last year when we put in that women, infants, and children money. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are some issues that I suppose could be considered women's issues. The reproductive rights issue that mm -hmm. we're talking about is certainly considered a women's issue. But also, um, I think that the other thing that this bill that Carrie Patrick's introduced is certainly a women's mm -hmm. issue. Interestingly enough, we have not banded together on that bill, and I, I... How will women react to that bill? Some are supportive of the bill, Democrats, I mean Republicans. They say some are, and no. some are not. See, I, I can see real see, I diverse think, opinions. Yeah, yeah, there are diverse opinions mm -hmm. on that bill. Um, but there have been changes, I think, mm -hmm. in the way women feel, and maybe it's numbers. Maybe all of a sudden yeah. we've got more of us. Yeah, so more clout, we can more have numbers. individual differences, mm -hmm. and they're not so apparent. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Now, as a, a freshman legislator, did you have any mentor when you came here? Did you have anyone that had helped you in your campaign and supported you and helped you get on committees or anything like that? No, oh, in fact, I was put on. I wasn't put on local government, which was my oh, area really? of expertise. I was deliberately put on, not put on local government. In fact, when I came up here, I would say not only did I not have any mentors, I probably, in some respect, was sabotaged by the Johnson County delegation in the sense that they, mm. I was the first, which is interesting, I was the first state representative woman from Johnson County. Oh, my goodness. And Jane Myers had been here Yeah, but she was in the Senate, yeah. And so I was the first state rep. 
Huh. And a lot of the legislators, in fact, I, re I remember Steve Plow came up to me, and some other people came up to me and said, Nancy, um, you're really a lot nicer than we heard you were. And I said, well, what did you hear? And they said, well, we heard you were going to be a real bitch and a real feisty <laughs> activist. And I was almost shunned for a while yeah. from, from the delegation. Well, that's interesting. Well, who's your senator? In, in uh, my senator's Jim Allen. Oh. Mr. Mm. Chauvinist himself. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, I had no one that I looked that, that helped me at all. In fact, I had a reputation probably that would make people not want to help me. Mm. Oh, that's... Um, I was put into an office um, with Dorothy Floatman, who was mm -hmm. just a real kind, nice person. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say she was a mentor, but I think she she provided some of the help that... Not only that, but I wasn't able to go to the freshman orientation because I had to be in Washington for a meeting that week. And so when I came up here, I had I had no idea what my telephone number was. Nobody oh called me and gave me any information. I didn't know where my office was. I didn't know what to bring. I didn't even know there was a swearing-in ceremony. My family didn't come with me. Nobody told me there was a swearing-in ceremony. Oh, so my God. I didn't God. have anybody up here. <laughs> I lonely. So I, I bet have, you did. <laughs> That's kind of um, what ended up happening is, you know, I, I ended up meeting some of the freshmen, mm -hmm. other other freshman members, and became friends of some of the freshmen that were, were there. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, there were, I had absolutely no mentors mm -hmm. here. And then after, after a while, some of the Johnson County Republicans would, would call me up and say, Nancy, I don't think you want to vote that way in a bill. I mean, that's going to mm -hmm. hurt your district. And I said, thank you very much, and voted the way I wanted to anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and because I had no allegiances to anybody, that to me that was good. Yeah. Um, I didn't have to feel like I owed somebody something. Mm -hmm. I owed the Republican Party nothing. They didn't help me. They didn't. They didn't get involved. They in didn't the get campaigns. involved in my campaign, mm -hmm. and so I came up owing nobody anything but my mm -hmm. people back home, who were Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. So I came up here very independent, and um, you know I never thought about beyond two years. I never thought about voting. Mm -hmm casting a vote because it might hurt me back home or because mm -hmm. I didn't understand something. It never, ever dawned on me. Mm -hmm. I was very grateful that I, mean, I, I mm -hmm. came up uh, pretty, pretty loose and, and stayed that way. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Different, a different approach. Well, you said you didn't get on local government. What committees did they I put you on? I ended up getting on a government organization, transportation, and um, no, computers, communication, and technology at 3.30. And um, I, th I guess it was transportation. It was not one hmm. Well, uh, what are you on now? I'm on government organization, which I've asked to stay mm -hmm. on, and uh, ranking Republican of, of um, local government, and uh, and now on economic development. Hmm. That's um, like you really changed yeah, all of well, them, haven't you? Leadership changed, and mm -hmm. I became a more respectable member. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do you hold any other leadership positions besides the ranking of minority? I have you held? I serve uh, as chairman of the State Community Development Block Grant Program, but I was appointed to that position for John Carlin, hmm. who I became very much acquainted with during the Stanley Seward case before I was ever state rep. So okay. he appointed me to that. And uh, I chair the State Emergency Response Commission. And I was just appointed to the emergency. Now, it, the State Emergency Response Commission, what is their That's, uh, that's a federal, uh, where they, they are in charge of community right to know for hazardous materials okay. and the emergency response okay. of hazardous materials spills and things like mm -hmm. that. And then I'm, I was just appointed last week to the Emergency Medical Services Board, which I asked to be on because I felt there's some things going on with the State Emergency Response Commission, Emergency Medical Services Board, and training, and I kind of wanted to oversee Hmm. Both of them, so. well, that's interesting. Uh, what bills have you sponsored and introduced besides the one you've already mentioned? Is there oh, anything else? You gender balance, I, uh, which is coming up tomorrow. Um, I've introduced bills. Oh, a, a variety. Of A lot of the deaf and hearing impaired bills, um, commission on a task force on autism, and then later mm. commission on autism, and I served on the task force of autism, knew nothing about that, but I met them at a mm. conference uh, and became interested in them. I, I ended up developing a real interest in people who were up here lobbying. I observed the process and realized a lot of, 
a lot of grassroots groups don't know how to lobby. Mm -hmm. So I offered to help them lobby and effectively kind of go through the process and became interested in their issue and then started, uh, and in fact I serve on their board. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some pickup truck legislation which I sponsored now with some other women. Um, mm -hmm. Just a variety of, I, the state emergency response bill was one of my bills. We started working on that before the federal government even mandated it. So I get you know, a lot of hazardous material kinds of bills. Mm -hmm. well, can you, or do you have any particular vivid memories of, of victories or defeats on legislation oh, you proposed? Uh, very vivid memory. On, on the very first bill I sponsored uh, <laughs> was a, a bill on polygraphy. Now, I knew nothing about oh, polygraphy. Yeah. You know, the lie detector tests? Oh, yeah. I knew nothing about polygraphy. But a guy in my district was a polygraphist, and they wanted to form a state board of polygraphy. And I said, sure, I'll help them with that. So I stupidly sponsored this legislation, and I worked hard on that bill, and I, and I got it passed. I mean, it was a real fiasco. And there, as I look back, I wonder how I ever did it. I mean, they were fighting among themselves, and, and <laughs> Well, and I, got a, I even got a plaque up there somewhere for those guys. Well, the next year they came back and uh, wanted it repealed because it was too oh. expensive. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, well, well, that was, and, I, and I love it because every time, you know, it was one of those bills where I was so proud that I did it. And um, then they came back and wanted it repealed. So, yeah, it, it was one of those uh, bittersweet kinds of things that... Uh, uh, well, now you mentioned the, when you came up here to be sworn in, you didn't even know there was one. Did you feel real left out? Was that kind of a, I, a memorable event well, <laughs> because I of that? I was kind of surprised that uh, nobody told me, yeah. and I remember thinking, would I have asked my family if I knew, would I have expected mm -hmm. them to come? Um, yeah, I kind of felt, kind of, you know, in hindsight, I thought it was something my children would have mm -hmm. enjoyed, but... Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. <laughs> it's too late to worry about it. What do you think your main duty is, or job is, or responsibility is as state representative? Well, see, I guess I would expand the responsibilities beyond the lawmaking or legislating, mm -hmm. and maybe that's what probably gets me in more trouble. Than that. <laughs> I, I guess, I feel my responsibility is to represent my people. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, goes beyond just the lawmaking part of it. That goes into all state business and state agencies. And I do a lot of probably social work kinds of things looking back mm -hmm. um, that a lot of people don't get involved in. I spend a lot of time on people problems. Uh, all the boards you've mentioned. You yeah, on too. a lot of people boards. Mm -hmm. And I, I do that because, first of all, I, I'm a frustrated missionary, and I feel that's kind of who I am. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think as a state legislator, if I can cut some of the bureaucracy for them, that's what I should do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel my main job up here, I guess, is to only write laws. Um, I think, I suppose, it's to make a better quality of life for the people mm -hmm. back home, whether it's repealing laws, whether it's watching out for their best interests. Um, whether it's accessed in the system. Yes. Nobody ever told me what a legislator is supposed to do, and I've not found any qualifications or any <laughs> job description that really tells you what to do. Yeah. So I've just kind of made my own way, and I have no idea the person before me or the person after mm -hmm. me what they'll do. Well, it's interesting. That's, that's kind of what I do. Mm -hmm. well, I want to ask you a few questions about yourself personally. Now, you told me you weren't born in Kansas. You've lived here since 1980. Where were you born, and where did you in grow Chicago up? I grew up in um, 1942. Uh, lived there for about five years, I guess. My father died, and my mother remarried, and we moved to Waukegan, Illinois, which is um, not too much the county away. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in Waukegan. And is that an urban area? Yeah, Waukegan's a large city. It's a county mm -hmm. seat, so it'd be kind of like you know, mm -hmm. like Olathe. Um, but then we moved out in the country when I was in high school, so I lived oh. out in the country for about four years. Mm -hmm. in townships, in fact. What kind of activities did you participate in in high school, in None. grade school? None. Uh, in fact, I was uh, not a very happy child. My father was, my stepfather was an alcoholic, and I mm. pretty much stayed away from a lot of activities mm -hmm. and was not a good student. Mm. Uh, 
looking back, I mean, I might have been brighter than my grades revealed, but I never spent any time studying. In fact, I spent very little time at home. I see. Really could have been a juvenile delinquent, hmm. um, but didn't. And when I went to college, which was later in life, Oh, you I didn't just, go right out of high no, school? No, no, no money. No. I, I left home at 17. Hmm. I graduated from high school when I was 17. And oh, my I mean, goodness. You were young when you graduated. Yeah. Um, just because I guess that's, I, went, I, mean, I started mm -hmm. early on because they didn't move me ahead or anything. And as soon as, I, as soon as I graduated from high school, I left home. And then I graduated one day and I was out the next. And I wonder, looking back, now that I have a 19 year old son, I look back and wonder how my mother ever stood that. But I'm, yeah. There were four of us, and I suppose she was glad one of us was gone. <laughs> were you the oldest of your... I was the second. You were the second child. And actually, my sister had left um, and got a job, and then I went to work for the same company she went to work for. Oh. I moved in with her roommate when she moved to Chicago for a different job. And, huh. um, like I said, I was 17, went to college basically went to college because of some people who did become mentors in my early years mm. of working. And they were all men. There weren't any women. Mm. There were very few women uh, working in those days in 1960. Mm -hmm. Where did you say you worked? I went to, worked at Abbott Laboratories, which is a very oh. uh, pharmaceutical company. Uh -huh. And worked there, started there in 1960. Mm. And that's the year I graduated. I started in, like days after I graduated. and. Uh, Went, went later and did remarkably well in college. Hmm. Graduated, uh, I think I ended up with all A's with two B's or something like My that. My goodness. So, I mean, it wasn't that I was stupid or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just, well, two things. I don't think when you live in an environment like that, you, you, you yeah. have the opportunity to study. And we lived away from the high school, so I couldn't walk um, anywhere. And we had to drive, and it was like seven miles from the high school. My goodness, that's so cool. Yeah, that's so we took a long bus ride. Mm -hmm. and. There was just no way to get involved in mm -hmm. extracurricular activities and no way to really get involved with people issues. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one reason why I spend a lot of time now looking at hmm. kind of mentoring other people. Well, that's there interesting. Some people there for me. Yeah. And, and I always look, you know, you see some kids and you just think, yeah, you know, they, they maybe need a little extra push like I needed to, somebody to believe in them, somebody just to say, you know, you can do it kind mm -hmm. of thing. So. Well, where did you go to college and what did you study? I went to, um, when I was in high school, my senior year, when I got a car, I went to Moody Bible Institute. I was, I got very actively involved in church. Ooh. I thought I was going to be a missionary. Of course, that didn't work. And had actually uh, applied to, and was accepted there. And if, if I recall, it was like $600 a year. It was some ridiculous amount of money. It wasn't very much money to go to the Moody Bible Institute. And uh, my father lost his job. And um. he didn't keep the job very long. And my mother needed the money. So I gave him the money. And I never went to college. And just, so I kind of went at night, and then I ended up, after I started working and left, um, I went to Trinity uh, College, which is an evangelical free church college, mm -hmm. close to uh, where I live. Went there, and had, had some super people who, who uh, encouraged me. I mean, my family never wanted me to go. They really thought it was stupid to go. Mm. And but others, people outside other your people, family. Yeah, oh. yeah. My, my mother still doesn't understand what I do or why I do it. I, mm. I think she's, I'm just so foreign to her that, but interestingly enough, after I went, my older sister went back and my sister oh, really? got a nursing degree and then, and then she um, went and got her bachelor's degree and my brother did go to college, but I helped him mm. financially. Oh really? So I'm not sure. How much younger was he? Maybe? We're all three years apart. I see. So, so you really hadn't been out very long when you were helping No, you. not very long at mm -hmm. all. But I had a job, which is more than mm -hmm. anybody else in the family had. My mother mm -hmm. ended up going to work a little bit, uh, but never had that money because my mm -hmm. dad never worked. I mean, he, he never, sometimes he did, sometimes he didn't, but there was mm -hmm. never any money. Um, but then after that, decided, after I realized I was not going to go into missionary work, <laughs> I ended up leaving and going into a different school, Vera College in, in Lake Forest. I see. Graduated from there with a degree in sociology. Sociology. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And then that? I, yeah, and then here I, I went back to get my master's, but I didn't finish. In fact, I been on my mind to call, and I think I'm, I think I lack nine hours or something. Oh, like my that. goodness. So it's not enough to, I mean, I should just go. Yeah, through. yeah. Uh, I would have finished had I not became a legislator, but mm -hmm. then I just didn't feel that, that taking the time with my family, then when I was home I could go and do something mm -hmm. else, but I can do that now, mm -hmm. although now I'm not sure they'll take the credits if I have to go back. <laughs>
Well, it's, it's better to do it when you have time to enjoy it. Yeah, I love going to school. I, if I, you know, I'd be going to school if I weren't here. Yeah. I've always gone to school and I really enjoy it. You know, just the. I mean, not a lot of courses when it's really pressured, but just the fun of going to me mm -hmm. is really, really interesting. Well, you, you said your husband was transferred here, and that's why you moved here. What does he do? He's a research veterinarian. He's right now oh. vice president of um, technical services or scientific affairs for a veterinary pharmaceutical hmm. company. Well, now, uh, at what point did you get married? After after college? or? No. Uh, well, I think when I graduated. We got married in 19... 67, and I finished my degree in 68, so, so I had not, close, yeah, yeah, I was close, uh, uh, he never, he never, he was supportive, but he never um, really cared, I cared, he never really cared, mm. and he, his family's all very highly educated, I see. and he's, his uh, father has his PhD, his brother has his, his PhD, his sister, mm. has a, his sister has his master's, and I always felt really inferior to them. <laughs> um, and, he, and that never bothered him, that really mm -hmm. had never bothered him, but it bothered me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't finish my degree because of his family, but I always thought it was kind of strange that everybody else said this, but he didn't care if I did. <laughs> Well, and you have children. How many we children? We have two children. Uh, we have a 19-year-old boy and mm -hmm. a 17-year-old boy. And how old were they when you were first selected? 10 and 12. 10 and 12. Okay, so they were still at home. Little. Grandma came. Okay. Got a grandma. I would that's, not have left them without a grandma. That's great, yeah, it makes it hard. Yeah. And you lived down here then most of the time? I did the first year. In fact, I, I, had some, mm. I, I had some real interesting stories about my first year. Um, I ended up, nobody ever told me anything about the legislature as far as the social events and and all that stuff. So finally about three weeks before, somebody said, um, well, you are going to live up here, aren't you? And I said, well, no, I mean, no, I'm going to commute. And they said, well, oh, no, there's times that, you know, it's yeah. really not going to be able to do that. And you really ought to say, and I said, well, okay, okay, I'll, I'll get a room. So I ended up getting a room over on Huntoon, which is not too far from here. And you probably know the woman who I rented it from. Uh, I can't even remember her name, Mary Ann, I think it is. And she married a young man. She worked for Menninger's, I think. And she married a young man like 20 years younger than she was, who was a Washburn Law student at the time. Hmm. I think of her last name. She, she um, I can't even remember that name. Anyway, I rented a room in their house, which is just a block away from here. And it was the funniest thing I ever done in my life because I shared a bathroom with somebody else. When I got up there, there was no heat in the house, which nobody told me. Um, they had two dogs. The very first night I slept there came barging in the middle of the night. Two big sheep kind of wolfhound dogs scared the heck out of me. I mean, it was a disaster. Oh I mean, my gosh. I had to take off my shoes when I walked in the door and I'm thinking, what am I doing in this place? Ooh. But I figured I was only going to do that periodically, mm -hmm. and it, as it turns out, I ended up spending a lot more time because it was just, it's just too much trouble mm -hmm. to drive back home. Mm -hmm. Besides, how, how far is about it? About an hour and a half. Yeah. So that would be a three-hour yeah. trip, and then by the time I get home, it's really fun. My kids would say, Mom, can you sew a button on mm -hmm. my, you know, or I didn't wash the dishes, mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so finally I realized that they got along just fine without me. <laughs> I think I've done all right. I think my younger one probably has suffered more than, mm -hmm. than my older one who's very independent. Well, do you think there was a cost to your family then for you to be in the legislature? Uh, yes, I think there was a cost. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I think there were trade-offs also. Okay. And uh, one of the trade-offs, I think, is my husband um, played a much more active role emotionally in the mm -hmm. children's lives, and I think that was very important. I, he has always been, quote, supportive but there are always traditional male and female roles, mm -hmm. and my role as a mother was always to provide the support system. And there were just times he had to provide that without me. I think that mm -hmm. was, uh, it, to this day, he's very close to the boys, and I think that was a positive trade-off. Plus, um, my youngest son has always been very attached to his grandmother, and I think that was a very good relationship oh, yes. for them, yes. for her to be there. When, I, when he was born, I had to have a hysterectomy shortly after he was born. He was 12 pounds. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> took a lot of me with him. Um, so she came and took care of him when I was 
it, you know, in mm -hmm. the hospital. And when I came home, he was like a month or two old. At she that was time. really she close to him. him. Yeah. And that became her baby. And I think they've always had a very special relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a real positive mm -hmm. thing for both of them. That mm -hmm. she moved here when we moved here in 1980. She was in Florida. And she became a significant part of our family. Mm -hmm. She'd move in when I was gone in those early mm -hmm. weeks and go home on weekends. So, mm -hmm. I mean, she was kind of a surrogate mother. And to this day, I think she still has maintained that. She's there right now. My husband's mm -hmm. out of town this week. Mm -hmm. and she's there with my son who's 17. So. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. But yeah, I think they miss things. And I think mm -hmm. my husband's missed things. Uh, he travels a lot. And, and I used to travel so. with him. You um, can't do that then while you're in session. Now. And he goes, you know, goes to a lot of exotic places. He hmm. travels worldwide. And, and uh, also, I think there are things like basketball games you miss and not mm -hmm. being at certain things. Uh, and Myron travels too, so it's not like he can always go. Mm -hmm. um, plus, you miss when they come in um, at night and yeah. they're not there. But working mothers miss that too. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I've never really said that as well and said my family's really mm -hmm. suffering. Yeah. yeah, well, that's that's good. I think that's interesting that there's, you call it trade-off. Now, when you were, I want to back up just a minute here, when you were in school, either college or high school, or even any time in, in those years, were there any organizations or have there been any organizations since then that sort of prepared you for what you do as a legislator? I think the traditional League of Women Voters. <laughs> you, you were a member of that? I know. Any um, any others? Did you debate in high school? No, I didn't debate. Yes, uh, not not in high school. No, that that, mm -hmm. and I was not actively involved in any extracurricular things in college either because I was a, never lived there. I was a commuting yeah. student. I always felt somewhat older than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that I did when I was very young, I became very actively involved in my church youth group. We had a very very large church. Uh, like thousands, we have a thousand at Sunday school. My goodness. And it was a very large church. Yes. And so I um, I became a member when I was young of the Christian Education Board. Mm -hmm. And I think that was an invaluable experience of mm -hmm. working with diverse people and mm -hmm. watching how boards work and watching how consensus is developed. Um, plus then I, I chaired the Youth Group Association of the, of oh. the junior highs and was responsible That's for... That's quite a responsibility. Yeah, when, you're, when I was that young. And yeah. so I, I think that really helped, I think, mm -hmm. in, in organizational skills mm -hmm. and things like that. What kind of things did you do as, as the chairman of that group? Of that group? Uh -huh. uh, oh, did you plan meetings? Oh, I planned meetings. We, we were a very active church. We had um, Sunday evening meetings and Wednesday night prayer meetings. Mm. And then Saturday night, every Saturday mm -hmm. I had an activity for them. And uh, that would be anywhere from going mm. to Chicago to visit another church to planning uh, special speakers to come mm -hmm. in to having seminars on drugs or music or something like that. Well, now, was there, was there a youth director at the church? There was a youth director as well. You could confer right, with? And, right. And there uh -huh. was the board that mm -hmm. I was also on, so I had support system there. Mm. Well, that's interesting. Uh, do you think that uh, being in the house has made you a different person or changed you in any way? Hmm. Never thought about that. Um, no, probably not. Probably not internally different. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten older in the last seven <laughs> years. But we all. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose in some ways I'm maybe less confrontational than I used to be. And, and um, it hmm. might have changed me in that way. I don't get quite as upset. I, I found it difficult when I first got here that the process was so slow. Mm -hmm. And if anything, perhaps I've learned patience a little bit more than I did mm -hmm. on the outside. Uh, of course, when you're involved in local government, it doesn't it, it's mm -hmm. you only have seven people to deal yeah. with rather than 165 or whatever your board is. Um, and so maybe that has helped me with patience. I, I was thinking the other day when I had a meeting that was quite confrontational, not on my part, but the people who I, I was with, I was with some county commissioners, and they got all angry and upset. And mm. I thought, normally I would probably have gotten upset back, but I was very calm and I thought, it's not interesting, I can stand back now and observe the mm. process That's without joining in and being part of the problem. Yeah. I can look at it. Uh, and so, yeah, I suppose I've changed in that mm -hmm. way. I've, I've learned patience and, and another thing, maybe I've learned, I don't want to say individual differences, but I think I was always very tolerant of individuals. Um, 
but I, I, and I've always been empathetic, so I don't think it's even jumping mm -hmm. to the person's perspective and, and looking, but I guess sometimes I still get frustrated, but not as much as I used to, with I can see something so clearly, and I'm willing to put in the extra time and the extra mile to go, and somebody else isn't, and I always mm -hmm. want to know why they're not. Uh, hmm. But no, I don't, I, I guess I've never thought about changing other than patience, mm -hmm. perhaps, is the best thing I can think of. Do you think it's changed how other people see you? Do you think being in the... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's changed how my family sees me, which is not, not, not my, my extended family, uh -huh. but my extended family sees me, and that's, that's not, to me, a very good thing. I mean, really? They, they, it's a negative thing rather than a positive thing. Mm. My younger sister, um, and my mother told me I, I kind of intimidate her because mm. I'm wealthier, I'm better known, I'm, I mean, there's no jealousy there. I don't yeah. have jealousy, but she's not... That's I was real comfortable with me hmm. because I'm so worldly. Hmm. And she's, you know, she's kind of living in the same hometown she was raised mm -hmm. in, and, and her world is much more narrow than mine. So it's changed how they've seen me. Mm -hmm. I think it's changed how my mother has seen me, too. And again, I feel real bad about that because I don't think that's positive. Mm -hmm. I think it's more negative. Mm. Um, and they weren't here to campaign with you no, or really they participate. Here, so uh -huh. so they've, not, they've not grown mm -hmm. with me in this sense at all. Mm. They love me, and I, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they understand me. And my mm -hmm. mother found it real hard that I love the children. She mm -hmm. just felt that that wasn't something mother, mothers do. My goodness, and but I, I identify with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I think that was hard for her. Um, but it's, yeah, I, I guess it, I don't think it changes how people view me, except every once in a while something strange will happen, like you're in a dentist office with your kids, and all of a sudden you hear somebody whispering, and they'll say, ah, it's representative Brown, she came to my school. <laughs> You know, and then, and then you have uh, to stop and think, oh yeah, um, they view me differently than I view mm -hmm. myself. So, That's yeah, you get those kinds mm -hmm. of things that you never got before. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned earlier, uh, before we started this interview, that we had uh, done a little statistical study of, of the women in the Kansas, well, in the House and the Senate. But we found that in 1975, uh, a big change occurred. We don't know what caused it. But from that year on, there have been more women every year in the House. Up to that year, there had only been four at a time, the most. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of started in 1920 with four, and then every now and then there would be four. But the always four left. Know. What happened? I don't know what happened in Kansas, um, looking back. That's before you came to Kansas. before I came, so I don't know whether there's anything specific to Kansas other than looking at Kansas history. It seems like they've always been more tolerant of women. Mm -hmm. But I remember even in Illinois that in many cases I was the first woman on the city council, the first woman... Uh, you were the first woman on the council right, there in... Right, no, in city Illinois. So uh, there were a lot of firsts happening around that time, and I'm trying to think what... what was that... Period. When were you elected to the city council um, first time? 1971 or two or so. so this is a little bit before 70s, that, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Um, I don't know what what happened in the 70s that that would have. Um, well, so it's, let's get a little past what happened in the 70s. Why are there an increasing number of women? Do you think being elected? I I think. Well, there are a lot of things. For one thing, obviously the modern conveniences of life have made mm -hmm. it easier for women to be able to leave their families and leave their homes and go off and do other things. Um, I, I've just watched the young women that I've known the, in the youth group, for instance, when I was just a few years older than them, and, and they still had the traditional roles that they were going into. They were going to be teachers or nurses or get married. Mm -hmm. And now I've watched young women who have gone through school and uh, they, those traditional roles aren't there for them. Um, so I think just perceptions have changed historically in, in expectations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether we've become more affluent as far as allowing our, our families to get better educated. And so therefore, when, they, when the families leave the next generation, it's easier for mm -hmm. them to go on and do other mm -hmm. things. Um, I, I, from, from our standpoint here, I think any time a woman's in office, you pave the way for other women. Mm -hmm. and so. Yeah, but that might be the mushrooms mm -hmm. at, at, at all. I personally don't think women are very good at mentoring other women, and that's something we need to do a better job at. But surely, if you do, that paves the way for other women as well. Mm -hmm. And I've not felt that any woman's been willing, quote, to be a mentor of mine 
But as I look back at where I've been in different places, there weren't many women there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I try real hard to, to mm -hmm. look for, for that. And, and so if there are other people like me out there that are first women, and then we become more comfortable bringing another woman along. in the house are in my generation. I mean, in mm -hmm. my age, in, in the late 40s, thereabouts. So maybe a lot of different things have happened with them as far as their children are grown up and, and they can go back and do things. Education at the time was just becoming more accepted as, as women fulfilling mm -hmm. degrees and returning but How students. old were you? You told me when you were born, but I forgot to ask you, how old were you when you were elected to office? 30, what was that, in 19? I was born in 1942, and I was elected in 1942, early 40s. Mm -hmm. Okay, that seems like an average age. Age maybe, to yeah. kind of jump out and do mm -hmm. some things. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the women that are elected now, this year is the first time we've had a lot of younger women. Mm -hmm. First time we've had three mm -hmm. pregnant women. Mm -hmm. So that's real interesting. And I, I think all of us before them probably have paved the way in some yeah. respects to make it acceptable for women to be here. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, but I can't think of anything specific. Well, that might be all there is. You know, there may yeah. not, not be anything know. more definitive than that. To, you know, I, and I would say the men's attitudes have changed since I've been first been, have been here, too. That's that, interesting. Um, you don't have the snide comments as much as you used to, mm -hmm. uh, because there are more of us, for mm -hmm. one thing. The first time when we all band together, we were very threatening to the men. The first time we oh, really? uh, that bill, we got calls from men stating, are you going to do this all the time? I mean, it, it's something you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I remember Barbara Sable, when I first came in, you probably remember Barbara, she was Secretary of Health and Environment. Mm -hmm. She said to me, when I first came here, she and I became pretty good friends because I was involved in her issues, hazardous materials and stuff. She said, now get on here and say, I don't understand why you women in the legislature don't band together. You could really be a voting bloc. Mm. And I looked at her and I said, well, why would we? I mean, <laughs> I mean why would we want to be? Yeah. And, and, and now, as a woman, I'm surprised I've said that. Mm -hmm. Looking back. Um, then you have changed in that. Yes. And looking at Yeah, that. looking back, mm -hmm. I have changed in how I feel about that. But then there are more women now. Mm -hmm. You don't have to work as hard to isolate those women mm -hmm. and say, look, we can do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got women coming together now and saying, hey, we can do this. And it's a difference. It's a different uh, mm -hmm. process now than it was then. And the men, um, they were more threatened uh, even six years ago than they are now. Now there's more of us and they, they can't. I mean, the gender balance bill. Mm -hmm. uh, four years ago, I don't think we would have gotten the same kind of response. Mm -hmm. I mean, we passed it last mm -hmm. year in the House. Mm -hmm. so uh, not in the Senate, but you did in the House. Yeah, I think we will pass it. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying again tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's an interesting uh, I don't think we'll concept. Pass it yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Well, is there anything I haven't asked you about that you would like to include in this interview? No. It's been fun being here. Yeah. <laughs>